this video is going to be about psychopathy. I just want to go over what psychopathy is, what are the signs of it, how they diagnose it. I'm also going to throw in like a personal story about my sister. There's over a hundred hours of interview between us, between phone recordings and audio video. It's a master manipulator at every step of the way with her. I watch and I study people, obviously, you do too, mm -hmm. and how they act and how they seem to feel and react to others. Some psychopathic tendencies with that. If it was my family, I would, I said I'd kill for them, but I'd probably also die for them. She was on a documentary called Dead North and it was like a two, three day special. Kelly, why? She was the mastermind behind it all. She doesn't have feeling. She doesn't feel sadness. She doesn't feel remorse. Be nice. You know that's not in my DNA. <laughs> it was really big. She was on Snap, a couple other things. She killed her husband and her and her husband killed her boyfriend. And then supposedly there's more bodies and they're calling her like a female serial killer but I don't want to get into the whole story about what she did. Now you can't really diagnose it usually they call it like antisocial personality disorder and I'll get back into that. Psychopathy is so interesting to many people is the mystery of it so they often excel at wearing masks and blending into society but we now know that underneath that like charismatic facade that they put on it's a lot darker than what we see on the outside. For example like Ted Bundy he was considered conventionally attractive to women, which, I mean, I don't think he was attractive, but he's very intelligent, driven, and charismatic. And when the world knew for sure that he did do that, everyone was shocked. There's, but generally, no one expected what came to be his wake of destruction. Psychopaths have no moral compass. So many unsuspecting victims are terrorized by psychopaths on a daily basis. And yeah, sometimes they get exposed, but many times they go undetected for a long time. And even if they are undetected, no one wants to be the first to speak out about it because then they're made out to be crazy. The whole point of learning about this, besides like the intrigue of it, but it's better to be informed on this so we can protect ourselves, our families, from becoming a psychopath's next prey. So by learning to recognize the warning signs and setting boundaries, we can shield ourselves from their destructive influence. Psychopathic traits are substantially influenced by genetics, although there's research that suggests that non-genetic factors are involved as well. The scientists have observed signs of atypical functioning of particular brain areas, such as the amygdala. And to diagnose this, um, there was a psychologist, Robert Hare. It's called the Hare Test. The, it's the Psychopathy Checklist Revised PCLR and the Psychopathic Personality Inventory PPI. These tests are used by clinicians and forensic psychologists so they can assess the antisocial behavior. going to actually do one of the hair tests on my sister and like go over it and explain how they come to the conclusion that someone is psychopathic. It's estimated that approximately 1% of males and 0.7% of females could be classified as psychopaths. An individual may exhibit early characteristics associated with psychopathy as early as childhood. When it comes to kids, um, the term psychopath isn't an official mental health diagnosis. Early signs of psychopathy can be seen in children as young as two years old. Early exposure to a dysfunctional environment is likely a factor in the development of psychopathic traits. Like children who have been physically abused, neglected, separated from their parents are more likely to develop this. But male adolescents with psychopathy are more likely to have been victimized at a young age. Adolescent females with psychopathy, on the other hand, are more likely to have come from a dysfunctional background, such as frequent changes in like the foster homes. There is psychopath and sociopath. Now, they tend to do away with differentiating between the two, but there still is technically a definition for them. So psychopaths, they comes from genetics. Sociopath is more like if you've had a traumatic childhood or, you know, something horrific happened. So sociopaths is more of like an emotional instability, more chaotic in nature. Psychopaths kind of wear their mask a lot better. 
And that's why they say like a lot of these people rise to like the top of companies because like their lack of empathy, their, their callousness, they're not afraid to do things that, you know, harm someone's livelihood. Like a lot of people think that all killers or all people that commit crimes or reoffend are psychopaths and that's not true, but there is statistical associations between psychopathy scores and violent behavior as well as like other forms of criminality. There is elevated impulsiveness, like their tendency to deflect the blame and other antisocial traits that may make a psychopath more inclined than other people to cross some like moral boundaries and like threaten to kill or hurt someone. Someone crossing like moral boundaries or living like differently may not be a psychopath because but I have like a moral code that I follow. I'm really into like philosophy and it feels like We've all been, you know, conditioned to think a certain way. And I don't think like that. I just see things a lot differently. But I do have a moral code that I follow. So I don't ever cross a line. Like I just live my life freely without ever hurting someone, like emotionally, physically. And I just don't do something, not because there's a law. Just don't do it because that's not what you would want done to you. Even if you don't have like emotional empathy, you know, where you really feel like what others are feeling, you need to like develop your cognitive empathy. You don't know, have a really understanding of what someone would be thinking in a situation. So it's unknown how many psychopaths commit severe acts of violence, but among convicted killers, more than a quarter can be considered psychopaths compared to about 1% of the general population. There's evidence that psychopathic criminals are more likely to reoffend, but many psychopaths do not have histories of violence. So a lot of psychopaths do not go on and commit crimes, whether it is um, like any sex crimes, murder, robbing, so th there's nothing that you would see that would indicate that they're psychopathic by a criminal record. And not all serial killers are psychopathic. Many, perhaps most of them, exhibit psych psychopathic personalities. They obviously are showing a lack of empathy for their victims and no remorse for their crimes. So, like one thing about psychopaths that's very interesting, well, they say that psychopaths don't feel fear. That's not true, but they do have like a muted fear response to threats, which makes them more likely to engage in risky behavior. So fearlessness is obviously one of the traits of a psychopath. And that definitely is in line with my sister. She's very fearless in every aspect since she was a young teenager where her running away, maybe in the middle of the night with older men or whoever she was with, she just never seemed to have that sense of fear. Like she was scared that she wouldn't come back. She didn't have that. She kept repeating those behaviors over and over. When she would get into a fight with someone, she just didn't back down, not out of uh, showing off. It was just more so, she just didn't care. She has like interrogations that she, that have been like released on YouTube. Like there's one. And she was just very calm and collected. Like even the detectives, and profilers have said that she, you could just tell that she was not nervous, wasn't, she just did not have that fear response in her. Okay, so on the topic of female psychopaths, the psychopathic woman is often known for her histrionics and her performances, and a lot of times they're convincing to persuade people, like for her side of the story. Female psychopaths are not loyal to anyone, obviously, like in the case of my sister, her husband, they've known each other since they were kids, they've been married, and she, but, um, I mean, she just didn't care. It's almost like they gloat over your misfortune. Say that you're going through something, or you're having a hard time, you're depressed, anything you're going through. You could just see, like, the excitement almost that you were feeling that. It was like what they call, like, contemptuous delight. That's one of the only emotions that show on one side of the face and can't control that. When she was talking, or trying to relate to you, it did not feel real. You would look into her eyes. Like I said, it's a cognitive empathy. Like she was learning like what that person's thinking and what response they want from you. And she would just mirror that. Even when I was having a hard time going through something, it just felt like I did not feel the warmth for her. I didn't feel her. I just, it was literally, the way to say it's just words coming from her. And it doesn't mean you have to be psychopathic for that, but it was with a lot of her conversation. But it's not always what you think it is. My parents went through hell. They're like really good people. Well, like this raised us is amazing. This is the end of this. I'm just gonna make another video, but I wanna finish this and post it.
I did hold his nose. I held his mouth, though. The look on his face. It's confusion. Fear. Imagine how it is to drown in your own fluids. It's probably pretty painful. Didn't take me. I've like never done anything impulsive like that. Ever.